Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very senior and accomplished coach from Greece, Mr. Tassos Stavroupoulos. Tassos, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for inviting me, uh, Ashutosh. It's great to be here with you. Thank you. Uh, Tassos is a self-leadership and a mindfulness coach, and he's an author. Um, and we'll talk about his book uh, in a little while. So, uh, Tassos, let's start talking about your journey as a coach. What made you become a coach? Hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's a great uh, question to start with. Mm-hmm. So, uh, during my studies uh, uh, as a mechanical engineer in, in Greece, mm-hmm. uh, I wanted to become a production manager and to work in the corporate sector. Mm. And then after a while, I, I wanted to, to become a plant manager. And my dream was up to that. Mm-hmm. So probably I hadn't thought further, further than, than, than that. Right. But uh, that was what I wanted to do. Mm. So uh, since I finished my, uh, my engineering studies and mm-hmm. I did an MBA, I started working in the corporate sector and I worked in the corporate sector for 22 years mm-hmm. uh, up to mid-2020. Mm-hmm. I worked in one Greek company and three multinational companies in these 22 years. Mm-hmm. And I was privileged and honored to, uh, to cover almost every position in the supply chain. So mm-hmm. quality control, quality assurance, purchasing, planning and production planning. I became the production manager I wanted to become. I became the plant manager I wanted to become. Mm-hmm. I trained uh, uh, my team and uh, a lot of people uh, in middle and uh, higher management level positions from other subsidiaries. Mm-hmm. And eventually, I ended up becoming an operations manager. Mm-hmm. And uh, then my professional path in life changed. Mm-hmm. Uh, as, as, as Tom Hanks says in, in uh, Forrest Gump, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> so, right, right. Um, now, what was the reason for, for this change? Mm-hmm. Um, there were two reasons. The first reason was that in the last three years of my uh, corporate career, I felt that I was not aligned uh, with my values. I was in conflict with my values. Mm -hmm. And this started from a professional relationship that did not feel open and authentic to me, Mm -hmm. which depleted me. And this created uh, like a domino effect and a chain reaction in my life because I became irritated and angry often and... uh, I was almost always stressed, mm-hmm. and I was certainly not who I was, uh, who I wanted to become. Mm. So, um, in in autumn of 2019, mm. by accident, I, I I read something about a coaching program, uh, an ICF accredited coaching program in Greece. Yeah. At that time, I had no idea what coaching was, mm. but uh, reading about the program, I said, "This is what I need." Mm. Uh, to be calm inside, whatever is happening outside. Mm-hmm. So uh, I decided to follow this program and uh, I finished successful this program. And then in 2020, uh, I, I felt that I wanted to learn more and dive mm-hmm. deeper mm-hmm. and also get into an international context. So I, uh, I followed another accredited uh, coaching mm-hmm. program from IPEC, which is an American uh, coaching school. And uh, uh, here we are now and the rest is history. Very interesting. So uh, a question to you, you know, and I'm much older than you, but, you know, when I was a young manager, I, a coach or a mentor would either be someone from my family, a senior member from the family, or a senior manager in my company who took a liking for me. Mm-hmm. What has changed now that has made coaching so relevant and people are willing to pay for it? Yeah. Um. Well, I think that what what has changed now is that um, the only constant is change, first of Mm -hmm. all. And um, uh, we as people uh, tend to gravitate to what is familiar to us. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the only constant is change. Mm -hmm. And nowadays we're living in in a period where uh, uh, change is constant, rapid and and, uh, disruptive. Mm -hmm. Um, So... Wherever we look around us, you know, we see people uh, losing their jobs. Uh, we are unsafe about the environment and about uh, the world that we're going to leave uh, to the ne- uh, next generations. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a great pandemic and um, ha- it has changed our lives. 
everything that we feel that uh, was the normal up to two, three years ago mm -hmm. uh, has ceased to exist. Right. And on the top of that, there's a lot of fragmentation and compartmentalization. And mm -hmm. it's only natural to feel overwhelmed by all this change that is happening mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is more and more um, uh, important as it, individuals, I think, to become mm -hmm. more adaptive to change, more agile, mm -hmm. um, to be able to learn and unlearn, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to gain clarity within all this uh, rapid change and disruption and uh, mm -hmm. distractions that we have, okay. uh, know and decide where to put our attention to, mm -hmm. um, dive deep within, uh, but also see the broader picture and, and our place in this broader picture. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, uh, and also in, in uh, regarding companies, uh, there is a great shift from, from the old command and control model and paradigm to a new, completely different model, uh, mm -hmm. which is more diverse, inclusive, where the managers are, are, uh, are, are not leading by instruction, they are leading, uh, or by authority, but they are leading uh, through guidance and support, and they are more like a coach rather than, than a boss. Okay. And, and the employees learn to adapt and, and change and, and they give this fresh energy uh, and innovation and creativity to the company. Mm. So all this environment uh, is, uh, and, and all these things that I described mm. are, are the things that coaching is working with, uh, mm. with people. So um, the world is more open to coaching and it, it necessitates this has become uh, more, more and more um, important uh, as, as uh, the time passes, I think, for all these Interesting. Leaders. And what would you say is the difference between coaching and mentoring? Well, first of all, uh, to start with, uh, both coaching and mentoring uh, aim in, uh, in supporting and encouraging uh, the individuals in, mm -hmm. in maximizing their potentials, uh, in developing their skills, um, helping them become who they want to be. Mm -hmm. The main difference is that um, a mentor uh, is somebody that uh, provides guidance mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and wisdom and sometimes advice from his own pool of experience and his own expertise. So in, in the relationship between a client and a mentor, the mentor is the expert in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Coaching, on the other hand, in coaching, we believe that every person, every human being is unique and different. Mm -hmm. And every one of us is the expert in our lives. So... Uh, the coach is there just to, to, to help the people to, uh, to discover mm. the answers that they, they already have within. Mm. They don't offer uh, advice or solutions. Uh, they just offer this extra something that will, will facilitate and help people to discover who they are and what they want to do with their lives and where they want to go. Very interesting. So my next question to you is uh, that... You know, when, 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 when there's a contract between a coach and a coachee, I've often been asked, how long should this contract be for? That's, that's a good question. Um, well, uh, to starting, I can say that the, the average can be from uh, three to four sessions up to 12 sessions. And this mm -hmm. can take from one or two months to one year. Mm -hmm. Although there are some coaching associations that can last for several years. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in a smaller frequency and a smaller pace. Mm. Um, the, 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 the duration of the association depends on various factors. I think the most important are, first of all, the needs of the, the client, okay? Mm -hmm. The second is the, the, um, the chemistry between the client and the coach, because this is a, this is a partnership. So uh, if, if the chemistry is not right, then it, the duration can be very short. Mm -hmm. If, on the other hand, there's a very strong bond and connection between the coach and the and the client, then uh, this can last also several years. Mm -hmm. Another reason is um, the type of coaching. So if, if, if coaching is uh, performance-based or project-based, it can be shorter. Mm -hmm. If it is about an inside-out approach uh, or um, experiential coaching, then this takes more time mm -hmm. and needs more time to, to develop. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, a key factor for, for, for the duration of the association mm -hmm for both the coach and the client mm. is how they are committed uh, to the process and trust the process and the journey. Because as everything in life, coaching is not a destination, it's a journey. Sure. So 
if either the coach or the client are attached to their expectations, then uh, they, 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 they get carried away by the, the stories of their minds and their mm. expectations, and they cannot be present in the moment, mm. and they cannot give to the relationship. Uh, if they let them, their mind be free and enjoy the journey, mm. they're going to be rewarded, both of them, mm. uh, eventually. Uh, because, you know, everybody we meet is a teacher and student at the same time. Well said. And uh, before you take a coachee, what do you look for in her or him? Mm. Uh, yeah, this is also interesting. Um, first of all, I, I want to understand what is their, their motivation to start coaching. Okay. okay. Um, what do they want to accomplish? Um, what, what does a great coach feel like to them, even, even though they might have not done coaching before? How do they, 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 they feel about a, a great coach? Right. Um, and um, also, you know, I would like to know how open and curious they are. And, and uh, it's good to have a learning mindset uh, because if uh, you're not sure of, or if you don't want to, to learn and evolve, then there's, there's no, uh, it's a waste of time to invest in something that is not meaningful and purposeful to you. Hmm. Okay. And uh, from a coachy perspective, how does the coachy evaluate whether they have a good coach? Hmm. Okay. Well, I, I would say that the, f- the first thing hmm. is the general approach of the coach. So, um, you know, the, the, the coach uh, should, should approach with a genuine care mm-hmm. for, uh, for the coachee, to the mm-hmm. coachee, mm-hmm. and a genuine interest uh, to their agenda. Then what is a very, very important is during the sessions, the coach to be fully present in the moment mm-hmm. and honor the coachee. Mm-hmm. In order to do that, uh, the coach has to get a divorce from, from their thoughts mm-hmm. and listen objectively intuitively mm. and also reflectively uh, to, to the coachee, mm. meaning uh, sometimes playing back what he, he hears mm. uh, with the intent to understand, but also in order to create a greater awareness mm. and always create a safe space uh, in order to uh, uh, listen, not just what, what the coachee says, but mm. also what they don't say. Right. So uh, feel the, their body posture, their feelings, their experiences. Mm. Uh, their sensations and be kind and and you know uh, feel and listen and observe to all this without judgment but with kindness mm-hmm. and acknowledge that what the coach is feeling is always normal to them mm-hmm. and appreciate them as they are okay and this uh, creates a climate of trust and a safe space and creates a slowing down also of, of mm-hmm. this appreciation slowing down of the mind mm-hmm. and a calmer mind can unfold more naturally Mm. And then a stronger connection can be created. Mm. Um, very important uh, is, is also the coach to, to encourage the coachee to be their authentic self, to find mm. what is meaningful and purposeful to them. Mm. And for that reason, uh, it is good to, to help the coachee dive into themselves and walk uh, and work with their fears, their emotions, their beliefs, you know, uh, Asik Hartole said that uh, if you get the inside right, the outside falls into place. Mm. Well, um, and, and another thing that I, I would think is, is quite important is to stress mm. the client. Okay. Because um, when, you know, in moments of struggle or where we stretch ourselves, these are the moments of self-discovery and uh, when we grow. Mm. Um, last, uh, I would say that... Um, it's good to, to choose a coach that uh, has been through an accredited uh, program from a, an organization like EMCC or ICF, which is International Coaching Federation, mm. because they have a rigorous process and um, uh, with core competencies and code ethics uh, of, of coaching. And of course, they can also have uh, you know, uh, a free session in order to, to, to have the feeling of the coaching mm. and... Uh, the feeling of this chemistry that I mentioned before and how, how the connection feels to them. Mm, interesting. So now moving on, uh, you must have worked with many, many different uh, clients. Can you give me an example without any names on what are the kind of challenges you have handled? So um, let's say that uh, 
I, I, I'm working for, in, in different things, but one, one thing that I have been working more on mm -hmm. is uh, how to help people to break uh, the, auto, uh, the, the, the unconscious patterns, the autopilot patterns, right. as I call them, that do not serve them. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's only natural that uh, we always do uh, the best with what we've got. Mm -hmm. But through our life, from the time that we were born, um, we have been influenced by uh, the way we were brought up, by our parents, by our teachers, our friends, our society in general. Mm -hmm. And our voice eventually is not our voice, but it's, it is the voice of our parents, our teachers, our friends, our community. It is the voice of our experiences and our fears. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we get stuck into the stories of our mind or we get stuck into beliefs that they do not serve us. And mm -hmm. unconsciously we follow patterns that uh, we, we don't uh, want because mm -hmm. uh, we are not who, who we are. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this case, uh, what I follow is a, a certain structure that helps, helps me and the client to be in flow. And, mm -hmm. uh, and this... The four constituents is, first of all, uh, acceptance. So the, the, the most important thing is for, for the client and for every one of us mm -hmm. to accept uh, who we are with all our limiting beliefs, imperfections, and, uh, and fears. Mm -hmm. um, and accepting who we are, uh, you know, with kindness and compassion helps us accept also others mm -hmm. as, they are, uh, as they are, because we know that everyone is doing the best with what they have. Mm -hmm. And this also helps us to, to accept situations that we cannot control and mm. acceptance is the foundation mm. for every change in life okay uh, so we work on that and, and and the second stage um is to be mindful so to take a step back mm -hmm. see uh, the picture from a broader pers perspective mm -hmm. and uh, discern which are the patterns that are conscious mm -hmm. and that do not serve us okay. and just observe them uh, with kindness and compassion without judging them. Mm -hmm. And then comes the third step, which is after the discernment, this is, this is the awareness. So, so the third point is, uh, is uh, to, to, to be mindful and, uh, to, sorry, to, be, to become aware. And how mm -hmm. we are aware mm -hmm. is through self-reflection. So asking ourselves empowering questions such as this, this, this unconscious reaction, how does this serve us? Mm -hmm. How attached are we to, to, to our expectations? Mm -hmm. How these expectations impact the world around us? Mm -hmm. And how this reaction impacts the world around us? Mm -hmm. And what do the emotions that come up tell us? What is the message that they, they give us? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, is there any value that we have that is violated? Okay. And if it is, how can we honor this value in a different way? Mm -hmm. uh, how can we reframe Mm. this reaction in, 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 in thinking in a way that serves us and, and serves also the people around us. Mm. So working with these questions, uh, we're able to navigate through the feelings and, mm. and consciously choose uh, how we want to behave. And, and after this awareness um, comes the action. And the action is to build some new habits. Mm. Because, of course, we want to, to stop, you know, the unconscious patterns that do not serve us. Right. But this might take time and, and it, it doesn't, sometimes they might always be there. So a good way is to create a new healthy habit mm. that is aligned with who we are, that is aligned with our identity and value. Mm. And this, this new habit uh, will help us, you know, give us strength and inspiration and will overweigh the old habits. So it's this cycle of, of acceptance being mindful, awareness and self-reflection, mm. and action through creating new habits that serve us, and choosing who we want to be and how we want to behave uh, consciously in our lives. Very interesting. So now, uh, let me move to the next segment of our conversation. Um, and this is about uh, the book that you have uh, been involved in. Uh, tell me about the book and the chapter you have written, which is Leading with Empathy, How to Become the Leader of Your Life. My book is called uh, Visionary Male Leaders Embracing Feminine and, uh, and the Masculine Traits. Mm -hmm. And 15 people around the world with different backgrounds from different cultures, different countries, uh, offer a different kind of leadership, more inclusive, mm -hmm. more integrative, 
um, uh, and more diverse. Mm -hmm. And my chapter uh, comes from a story of, of, of my own life from, mm -hmm. uh, from my corporate sector, mm -hmm. where in a very difficult period of, of, of uh, my professional life, mm -hmm. um, I was um, pushing my team over the limits and um, I was not the leader I wanted to become. And I had, by accident, I had my wake up call mm -hmm. and I decided to listen more than, than I talk to mm -hmm. observe more than I act. Mm -hmm. And I changed completely the, the way that I, I operated as a manager and leader. Mm -hmm. uh, so I made the meetings informal. I, I met the people where they are, where they were. Mm -hmm. I mostly listened rather than talked to them. I created a safe space and, and through empathy and through acknowledging mm -hmm. their feelings and who they are, uh, the conditions were created to go to a new normal. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what, what, what my chapter is about. Amazing, amazing. And is this book available uh, on Amazon and all over the world? Exactly, exactly. It's available on Amazon and all over the world, yeah. Okay, wonderful. So Tassos, on that note, uh, I just want to say thank you very much for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me at such length about your incredible journey as a coach. Thank you for talking to me about so many different aspects of coaching that you have brought to your relationship and your professional uh, growth uh, you know along with your coaches and thank you for telling me about the wonderful book that you have been part of and the other chapter that you have written thank you again and good luck thank you so much Ashtos. it's been a great honor to be here with you thank, thank you so much thank you. thank you for listening to the brand called you video cast and podcast a platform that brings you knowledge experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.